as they can hear us screaming. Tonight, Motorwedge Step Up. Flying high. Soaring. Skateboard Big Air. Featuring insane skills. Bob Burnquist. Fluid style. Elliot Sloan. Hosted by Lou Vito and Brandon Graham. Theme by Bryce Vine. Featuring Gary Clark Jr. After christening our new home in Austin, Texas last night in front of the state capitol, we head down the road just a few miles to the world-class racetrack, Circuit of the Americas. This will play host to the next three days of events. It's normally the home of MotoGP and Formula One, but this week, it's everything X Games. Action, sports, and music, Circuit of the Americas is gonna be home to skateboarding, BMX, rally, super trucks, Moto X, and of course, a great musical lineup. Ah, uh, yes, night two starts now with Moto X Best Whip. Let's head out to the booth where Tess Sewell and Jeremy McGrath have the call. Uh, thanks, Brandon and Louis. This place, absolutely unbelievable. Circuit of the Americas, day two of X Games Austin, and Moto X Best Whip is on hand. Tessel here along with the king of Supercross, Mr. Jeremy McGrath. 72 wins, seven championships. But Jeremy, this is about as gnarly as sport can get. Oh man, Tess, it's good to be here. Good to be watching these guys. Good to be in the booth with you, buddy. Remember, man, these guys are gonna be with Tweet X Games Whip and the rider's last name because you at home are the judges for this whip competition. And we certainly have a stacked field out there. Josh Hansen, who took the gold last year, Jeremy Stenberg, of course, in the past, Jeremy, was certainly a fan favorite, but I don't think they're necessarily the front runners tonight. Well, it's gonna be, it's hard to say, you know, before that might have been the case, but now it's time to show us who's got the best whip, who's gonna crank this thing the most sideways. You guys at home gotta, gotta tell us who. Here we go, first off the ramp, this is the rookie, Tom Parsons, wow! Huge air, then followed by Bo Bamberg. And if you look at the top of your screen, you'll see the yellow light on the name. That denotes who is actually gonna hit the ramp next. Lance Corey, and there is our first shot of Vicky Golden. Throw it down. And there, Jeremy Stanberg taking a tentative look there. And this Josh Hansen, and I have to say, Andy last year absolutely rocked us. Yeah. With his gigantic win to win this best win competition. Hansen, we know Hansen as silky smooth. You know, the guy's got a lot of talent on the bike. Definitely got some whips. Vicky getting a little, uh, a little laid out, late whip, kind of like twitch there. You can see, I think what's gonna happen, they're gonna see some good stuff, but they're probably gonna try and save their best stuff for last. And just to let you know at home, quite a bit of wind here in Austin this evening, and it's actually blowing from right to left across this course. How does that affect you when you're up in the air so high? Well, I think the, these guys and gals are gonna be able to make adjustments for the wind in the air. Now, oftentimes they like to whip it one way or the other harder, right? So I think mean, they're better doing it one or the other way. Uh, it's gonna be tough. I don't know how that wind's gonna affect them, but obviously Parsons and Bamberg have no problem. <laughs> no problem at all. And again, looking at the top of the screen, Tom Parsons at 29%. Absolutely huge. I, I love the way Tom Parsons does that seat bounce whip. Well, you know what we're dealing with with Parsons? He's uh, been on the mend a little bit here, and, and right now just throwing it down at such a hard oh, man, Look at that. Upside just... down, and Bo Bamberg follows him doing the same thing. Man. So remember, the Ford fan favorite, you at home are the judges for this competition. Tweet, hashtag X Games with, and then the last name of the rider you want to win. And right now, Parsons and Hansen are pretty much neck and neck. Whoa, that was good. Hansen did a little turn down there. Look at, I mean, just look at that. And Parsons getting that thing upside down. The unbelievable thing is that Parsons coming back from a broken leg. He's barely been on the bike in the last four and a half months. And he's, he's managing to pull that kind of whip here tonight. That switch with the little late turn down. Hansen stylish as ever. 
Bamberg. You know what's funny? Is Bo Bamberg is dogging Tom Parsons. He's following right behind him, and <laughs> we're almost missing all of Bo's big wits because we see Parsons first. So Ford fan favorites. You're the fans at home. You decide who wins this competition. Tweet to hashtag X Games win, then add the last name of the writer you think should win. And that's how this will be decided. Two minutes and 42 seconds left to go in the competition. Vicky Golden heading to the ring. Look at this. Shout, I'm going to give Vicky a shout out here. That's quite a challenge doing what these guys are doing. She's tearing up that ramp. That's pretty awesome. And working that bigger four-stroke machine, which is yeah. heavier. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Parsons again. Look at this. 32% for Tom Parsons. Wow. No rookie has ever won the best whip competition. Looking good for Parsons right now. Man, Parsons, how can you deny that whip? I mean, we're just looking at the bottom of the foot pegs there. And this is an injured Tom Parsons. Uh, back in 2013 at Monster Cup, he won the Dirt Shock Best Whip. So he, I think, surprised a lot of people that time out. So that's why he got this invite to X Games Austin. Amber throwing down as well. He's, like you said, it's he's watching Parsons and going, man, I'm going to try and one-up you, but uh, these guys, in my opinion right now, Parsons and Bamber really breaking that thing. And, and remember last year, Josh Hansen really pulled out that huge, incredible win right towards the end of the competition. I think surprised us all. Parsons, though, good lead, 33%. Over Stenberg and then Hansen. Well, right now these guys have one minute, 20 seconds left in the car. They're going to have to bring out the best stuff they have. Well, we heard the crowd cheering there for Hanny, but we missed that. a lot of that went. Here we go again. Oh, Bo, just, it's crazy that he's following Parsons so close. You know, Tess, what I like to see, I'm seeing Parsons doing just about equal width from both sides, left and right. Pretty impressive. So here we go. We're in the last minute of the competition at best whip. And you decide who wins. The fourth fan favorite is decided by tweeting to hashtag X Games Whip and then adding the last name of the rider you want to win. That's Corey gets it rubber side down there. And Vicky Golden, she's got that real upright style, almost that turn down style where the back wheel starts to come around. Really stylish, really stylish. I don't like that shot there of Twitch. I'd like to see a little more body of that injury. Oh, wow. It's incredible. Oh, These guys are like in a demo right now. And they're super upside down together. But Tom Parsons, you see, just looking at that frame and the bottom of the pegs. Oh, man. Here we go. Countdown is on. Six seconds left in best win competition. And there you're watching Jeremy Stanberg and Josh Hansen. Oh, wow. The funny thing is, if you're Tom Parsons, you turn around and you're looking at the front wheel of Bo Bamber and <laughs> every one of those whips. I bet those guys are having a lot of fun right there. They're all night, all night doing that. Looks like this is going to do it for the competition. Listen to this Austin crowd. Amazing how many people have turned out here at Circuit of the Americas just outside of downtown Austin, Texas. Look at that crowd there. Texans are just loving it here. Yeah, that's cool. It's an outdoor event. Weather's great. You can see some nice whips. Pretty awesome. So huge props to all of these guys. Let's take a look at some of the whips that the guys were pulling out because it happened so fast you actually miss some of the details. Look at this right here. Parsons just looking back at Bamberg and Bamberg <laughs> just going upside down with that thing. Wow. And somehow they bring it back to us so perfectly. Watch this. Upside down. He could just keep going around and barrel roll that whole thing. <laughs> I'm sure they have. That right. is an injured Tom Parsons. Wow. Vicky Golden, the only girl in the freestyle motocross competition, and deservedly so, because she really Man. can lay it down. She, nice. she rides just as hard as most of the guys do. That's a great, great comp there. So, the Ford best whip. The polls are closed now for the Ford fan favorite, and you, the fans, have spoken. 
And America's Ford fan favorite is Todd Parsons, the rookie, takes it. Wow. I don't think he knows it yet. He better take his lid off so he can hear who won. It's you, Tom. It's you. <laughs> Looks a little, a little surprised. What? Is that a gold medal? Round my neck. Tom Parsons. That's about the Man. best surprise you can get, huh? Gold medal? That's a huge surprise. 32 years old out of Gainesville, Florida. A rookie here at X Games, Austin. And he manages to take it all on the night. Fantastic competition here at Best Wit. More coming up later. Now we'll hand it back down to Brandon and Louie, boys. Ah, uh, thanks so much, Tess. Great way to start night two as we hand out the first gold of the night and the first gold here at Circuit of the Americas. So much good stuff lined up here for the evening. But, Lou, I still have memories of last night's massive crowd in front of the state capitol etched in my mind. What was your biggest takeaway from last night? My favorite thing was just to see the crowd show up. Our first time X Games has been in Austin, and they all came out. And Jamie Bestwick, of course. Jamie Bestwick, not only a veteran, but eight gold medals consecutively going for his ninth. He had the target on his back, and he did it on his very first run. Nine golds. Yeah, for me, Louie, it was Jimmy Wilkins and Skateboard Bird. We're talking about a 20-year-old Dynamo coming in under the radar, just his second X Games appearance, and showing so much style, so much steez with that Ollie 540, and shocking everyone with getting that goal. But my friend, that was last night. So much good stuff lined up here for night two, including the main event, Skateboard Big Air. We're talking about Bob Bernquist, the most decorated athlete in X Games history with 26 medals, looking to regain the top spot. And Lou, you might say he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. I mean, you don't become the most decorated X Games athlete by letting people take that top spot like Elliot Sloan did last year. I guarantee Bob is going to be sending it. But they're not only battling each other, they're battling mother nature because the wind might be a factor and change things up tonight well we'll get into the big air action a little later but coming up next it truly is all about the elements as the men of enduro x storm the course for the final this is x games austin
X Games Austin is brought to you by America's Navy, a global force for good. And Ford, beautiful things happen when you go further. Welcome back to Circuit of the Americas, day two of X Games Austin, and we have a big night ahead. Moto X step up and skateboard big air. But until then, let's take you to the men's Enduro X finals. We come to the men's Enduro X final. What a lineup it is! Haker, Blasuziak, Webb, Brown, Robert, Gomez, Gersten, Aaron, Hollis, Tremaine, wow, Graffender, and Carl Redmond, where to look? This main event is stacked. Look at these guys. I think, obviously, the start is going to be key. Brown, we're seeing there. Hake, Haker, Blazuziak, they're all kind of on the inside. This start is everything. Oh, nerves are up as the Reds rise, and we are underway. Racing here in Austin now for the men's and general X final into the first corner. Blasuziak gets pushed out. Brown gets up on the inside. He goes through. Chris Hollis gets pushed to the outside, but Brown has barged his way through. Look at Cody Webb up on the inside in third nice. place. Nice. Now what happened? Brown got a nice start. Pushed Blasuziak wide. Caddy's going to want to give him back right away. And that level picking. And he makes the jump. He makes the jump. Wow. Anyway, these guys, nice start from the both of them. Mike, it looked like Mike tried to push him a little wide to give him a little uh, trouble there. But, wow, wow, look at that. Brown goes on the inside. He retakes the lead. We've had a couple of lead changes already. Brown spins up that rear tire. The Husqvarna and the KTM battling one way, then the other. And, they're still, and Brown's in real trouble. Brown is in trouble. He's had to take the exit. And that means that Blasuziak leads ahead. As Cody Webb here, what a turn up for the books on the wow. first lap. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. I mean, third position, we're going to have to look back and see Alfredo Gomez, the Spaniards, on the 89. Here is Brown, he's in fifth position by my reckoning, Jeremy. He can still do it. It's a long race. Long, long race. There's, there's a lot of guys with a lot of laps here. As we can see, anything can happen on this course. So, even Teddy, he's made his mistakes earlier in the day, so he's got he's to be patient as well. But we've seen him make some big jumps rather than two small ones. Is he risking it? rather than playing it safe. You have to say the former at this point in a 10 lap race. Look at this, look at this. Having a hard time. Blasuziak gets Cody out. Webb losing some spots. And if we come back, who, who's got a change of second position? I don't think Webb's in second position anymore. Looks like, looks like it could be Gomez. Oh, it's Haker. Wow. Haker goes from third to second position. Gomez down to third position now. And Mike Brown still in fifth, but getting closer to that fourth. He was in trouble there. Well, yeah. you were looking at the same thing as well. It's a bad Mike Brown was making a big mistake there, but Haker in second place doing a nice job. One lap ago, we saw Haker down the rock section, so recovering nicely. Now what he wants to do is set his sights on that man right there, the number 111. Addy Blazuziak currently running in the first position. Getting through the rocks nicely there. But here's oh. the section. Here, just as I said, here's the section that could get him, and he's had trouble all day there. Well, the 250 KTM powers its way out. Still, Colton Haker in that second position, the 24 year old from California. He had a silver medal in Barcelona last year. He's in the silver medal position at the moment. But look at that gap. It's it's that camera shot. Seems to be increasing a little bit. Gomez on the number 89. The Spaniard, he had a brilliant uh, medal in Munich last year. His sister had a brilliant medal in their hometown, or their, their home country of Spain last year. And I saw them leaving the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona last year with uh, his sister having got a medal, and they put it on the smallest trailer behind the, the, a real battered out car that was still celebrating. We've come from a small little village in near Madrid, and we've won a medal in the X Games. It was a brilliant little fairy tale for the Gomez family, and we got... Oh, oh, oh! Blatuziak goes down! 
And that means Haker. that Haker is really closing in. The Paddy Rasuzia holds the lead, but for how much longer? Oh, I think Haker smells blood. He smells blood. He's going to have to get up here and try and make something of, of this before Taddy maybe moves away from him again. But right now, we're shaping up for a good battle. Okay, we're on that five and ten through the water. Haker takes a little bit of a wide line to try and get less water, but Rasuziak just manages to get a hit, does he? Taddy on the 250, Haker on the 450. A perfect example about how many ways there are to skin a cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one way to put it for sure. How about one way to get through the rocks here? Look at these guys. Haker did a nice job and did a foot plant coming around. And here we are halfway through the race, Jeremy, and we're still that close. Yeah, no, this is great. This is great. Now, we haven't seen much of Mike Brown recently. He's dropped down the order. Jamie, what's happened to Mike? Mike Brown went down once again in that rock garden, and he was down for quite some time. And when he finally got up, he pulled off the course. The two-time gold medalist, Mike Brown, is off, and his day is over. Wow, the gold medalist from Barcelona last year and from LA in 2012 is out of this race. That I did not expect. Look at this. Haker coming up, making a nice jump there in the, from the water pit over that sand bump and gaining about a bike link on Taddy here. It's, it's shaping up. Come on now. Okay, well, the shadows are getting a little bit longer, but the heat is on here in Texas. The first of our four years for X Games Austin here at the Circuit of the Americas, and this race is well and truly on. Colton Hager, what's going through his mind now? You're close. You don't want to risk silver, but you can get gold. Well, you don't want to risk silver for sure, but you know what? Early in the race, he had a, Taddy had a gap on him, and he probably thought, man, I have no chance. Right now, he's like, hey, I'm in this thing. Right, right now, you see Taddy just making his way over that double. Colton missing the double, but I think he's going to have to... His idea probably would be to put as much pressure on that 111 as he can and force Taddy into a mistake, if possible. Taddy has... I haven't seen him look over his shoulder, but Taddy goes oh. wide. Haker just loses a little bit of momentum and does Brasuziak make... No, it's still even Stevens. Well, here's the deal. I, I think Haker is... In these jumps, right here, in these spots right here, he's going to maybe be able to make his best time. If he can get up the inside here and force something. See Taddy throwing a little block, going down low there. Nice move. As they go over the spokes, over the matrix, this is a close one for the gold medal. Oh! Over the firewood, over the oak, and still even Stevens between them. But Ratsuziak, does he make the big jump as he did earlier in the race? No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. But see, that was Haker forcing the pressure right on him. This is a battle right here. Awesome. On lap 9 of 10, lapping a bit to go. Does he manage to put the maneuver? He's on the outside for the right-hander. Oh, the light oh, just seems like to stop. stalled a little bit. And we, and, oh, 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 this is the moment. This is the moment. But Haker's got a moment. Does he manage to go around? Chris Hollis's Yamaha. Brasuziak manages to get the rub of the green as he gets out there. And that may have been the race for the goal. Maybe. Taddy did a nice job there getting around the lapper. And Haker, we still don't see Haker. There he is. No, no, that's Webb. That's Webb. I'm down. And still we wait for Haker. There, there he is. is. So, it was a busy day in Times Square in the Rock Garden, wasn't it? And it was looking towards Blatsuziak's luck that came through there, but he was lucky not to catch. Another rider as he starts the last lap here around this 1,300-yard course. So I said Cody Webb was a lap down. He was not. Cody Webb's taking second position. Gomez third. Apologies. So, man. Apologies. Cody Webb, what a ride. These guys are up front battling. Cody Webb making some time. Look at this. You can see him in the camera shot. And if he makes the maneuver, let's have a look to the left to go. We go. That's right. Same gap, different rider as yeah. you say. Webb, we got caught out there. Apologies to Cody as he makes progress on the two stroke against the KTM four stroke. So Webb on the beater. He's had a couple of silvers already so far in X Games. Might it be another silver? Might it be the gold? Blatsuziak making his way towards the finish line. Will it be another gold? Will it be gold number four for the pole? 
Yes, it looks like it. Taddy Brasusiak takes the gold medal here at X Games Austin in the men's enduro final. Second position goes to Cody Webb, the silver, and Alfredo Gomez, the Spaniard, takes the bronze medal. You didn't know who was going to be winning the gold. Wow. You didn't know who was going to wow. be on the podium until a couple of laps to go. Unbelievable race. That was awesome. Taddy Blasuziak, how did he keep his cool? This is the second half of the race, and even a pro... Oh, just gets a little off kilter going up that log in the rut. Kind of high sides him. Now this is where the battle started shaping up. Look at that number 10 of Colton Haker coming up on the 111. These guys are going through the logs. Haker almost making the move. He smells blood. Look at that, going up the inside here. Gets next to Taddy. Four. Here they go to the rocks. As we said, there's treacherous rocks there. Look at Haker stall, but he made it through. Now here was the key to the race. The 84 by down. Taddy getting around. Haker struggling and Webb going around. So it's gold for Taddy Blatsuziak here at X Games Austin. His fourth gold in his career. Taddy Blazuziak, his fourth gold medal, making his way through that tremendously challenging course in Enduro X. And let's see, we got a tweet here. Max Gersten sharing a little insight on how he picked out his outfit for the weekend here at X Games. Remember, for all things social, log on to xgames.com slash social. See behind the scenes from athletes and fans all day, every day, and get in on the social action. And speaking of action, we have plenty of that tonight. We have Moto X meets high jump in Moto X step up. Bikers are taking their bodies to the limit. And then we have Big Air. Can Bob Burnquist take the top spot back from defending champ? Elliot Sloan, we'll find out soon enough. Don't go anywhere.
live music capital of the world, seems a little presumptuous, doesn't it? How do you measure something like that? Is it because we have more live music venues per capita than any other city? Maybe it's hosting the longest running music series in American television history. Or that the entire industry flocks to Austin every March for South by Southwest. Or could it have less to do with numbers and more to do with legend? Willie at the Broken Spoke. Janice at Threadgills. Stevie at the Continental Club. Venues that have been around 50 plus years and names that will live forever. Five feet from the stage. Bass vibrating through your bones. What's this song really about? It's about the experience. What an absolutely fabulous host city Austin has been already. We are out at Circuit of the Americas and a beautiful night here in Austin, getting ready for Moto X Step Up. It is a high jump competition on motorcycles and take a look at this face. That is what they all are going to try and get the maximum speed and traction off to get up and over a bar. Very simple. You knock off the bar, you have to go try it again, you knock it off twice, you're out of that round. Let's take a look at the lineup, Jeremy. All right, we have some heavy hitters in here. Of course, we have the, the reigning champion, Ronnie Renner, uh, Matt Byton, Libor Podmal, Josh Hansen, Bryce Hudson, and Massimo Bianconcini. Bianconcini. Four there we go. gold medalists in the step up discipline. In that field, only Hansen and Biancaccini have not won a gold medal in step up. Ready to go, 24 feet out of Italia. This is Massimo Biancaccini. He does well in Europe on the night of the jump circuit in their step up. And he's going to give this massive wall of dirt a go here in Austin tonight. Nicely up and over for Massimo Biancaccini, so a successful attempt for him at 24 feet. Very nice, very nice. I can tell you, Tess, the start of this competition, you're very nervous. You know that 24 feet is the lowest bar setup you're going to get all night, but it's also the first jump, and you kind of want to warm up to this thing. These guys are feeling some, some nerves, and they got to get all that worked out here right in the beginning. Bryce Hudson, a surprise winner in Fuz de Guasu in the step up. And look how high he's going. Watching him in practice, he really had an unbelievably good start. And he's got such this vertical takeoff. Wow, he uses the right. No, it would be the left line. Disguise it, no problem. So, no problem there for Hudson. Two of the six already over. You saw Josh Hansen a little while ago in our best whip competition. And remember that Hanny was playing games a little bit last year with Ronnie Renner. He's trying to get in his head. Yeah, I remember that. I don't think uh, Renner was such a fan of that, but <laughs> it ended up working out for Renner. Whoa, Hansen just up and over there, but I think he's saving a lot. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, if the later this competition gets in is the hard, harder landings come into play and uh, you don't want to go too high at the beginning, wear yourself out. So getting up in the gate there, the Czech Libor Podmal is ready to go. And for more on Libor, let's head down to Jamie Little. Are you talking about Libor? In this event, you want to be 100%, the compression that these guys sustain. You want to have everything firing on all cylinders. Well, his right wrist was just broken and had surgery on it just over a month ago. He has it taped up, took some Advil, but he said he's far from 100%. And somebody who knows a little bit about broken navicular bones, Jeremy McGrath, you've sustained that before. Yeah, Libor is one tough cat here doing this. I mean, he's a month out of surgery. This injury is typically a two-month, maybe three-month injury, and he's taking a big risk here tonight putting this landing uh, on these wrists. Okay, went down. He landed a little bit front wheel heavy, too. And you were saying, Jeremy, it, repairing that, that navicular, actually, there's not much blood flow in that area. Yeah, there's a few names for this. It's a navicular, it's a scaphoid. I mean, either way, it, it's a broken wrist. Obviously, he had surgery, which was the right thing to do. Now, the navicular gets a really low blood supply. If you mess with this bone too much, it can die. Uh, and then if it dies, then you have to have a fused wrist. Now, for him, it's his right hand. It's his throttle hand. He needs movement in that hand 
So uh, tonight, as I said, he's taking a huge risk with these landings. Matt Biden in the gates. So many duels in Matt Biden's career. He and Ronnie Renner have won the last nine of 14 step-up competitions. Wow, looks like Matt gets over that thing really easily, lowers the front end, kind of flies flat. But did you see the takeoff there? It looks pretty slick. I think, I think traction is going to be a key here tonight. Right. And Biden has that very straight up and down style. He, he tends to go up there gets the front wheel over, picks up the back wheel. He almost sucks it up behind him, but let's compare this style of Ronnie Renner to Biden. When you see Renner go up, he likes to really whip that bike over the bar. Yeah, you know, Renner, I mean, he's just the master at this event. Look at that five-time moto step-up gold winner. I mean, just amazing style. And, you know, the interesting thing is going to be we, we have seen the lip now. It has a few different shovel marks in it, and Renner typically likes to carve up the face. And you can see that there. It's kind of got that ledge in the middle. The question is, how much is Renner going to be able to carve up that, that line with what they've done to it? Wow, as if by magic, Ronnie Renner showed us that perfect whip up and over the bar. You can see the difference in the two styles there. Look at that bike, styling. Nice. Beautiful whip from Ronnie Renner. Well, that will mean that everyone has cleared in round one, so all six are through. And that that bar is now going to go up to dizzying heights. And we've got our third member of the booth here, John Brankus from Sports Science. And John, we you know, we've been talking about freestyle moto and, and how we think about this. You know, a lot of guys just hucking themselves, but you know, there's there's a lot of depth to to the tech that goes into this, especially this sport, the step up. There really is. I mean, you see that each of these guys has really their own style of takeoff, but there really is one aspect of the launch that you have to master if you want a medal here, and that's really all about the timing. Check this out. In step up, riders slam on the throttle up the face of the jump and use chain torque to assist in compressing the rear suspension by about a foot. To maximize amplitude, riders chop the throttle and throw their weight forward, bouncing them like a pogo stick. The optimal time to do this is in between the time the front and rear tire leave the ground, which is a window of opportunity of just a tenth of a second. So when you're talking about a tenth of a second, that's optimal. A tenth of a second is four times faster than it takes for a 90 mile an hour fastball to reach home plate. So we're, this is really beyond a human's ability to react. This goes down to having precise timing, which is what these guys are gonna have to have the medal. Yeah, and you know, it doesn't take into effect what you have to do, like chop the throttle at a certain time to bring the nose down, to fly the bike flat, and then what about the landing? Now, on the landing, if you were just to deal with the straight equation of dropping an object from 30 plus feet onto a flat surface, I mean, you're talking about tens of thousands of pounds of force. Just wow. a human being is gonna get wrecked by that. So when you're looking at, <laughs> when you're looking at this sloped landing, that it's dirt, that you have suspension, that your knees are flexing, you're obviously minimizing that force as much as possible. When these guys land, it looks like a ballet. Like, doesn't look like they're experiencing much, but if they don't do it right, they can experience thousands of pounds of force, as much as an NFL linebacker blindside. Wow, Italian Massimo Biancaccini up and over at 26 feet. And if you weren't scared at home before you heard John <laughs> telling us about this, yeah. now I'm absolutely yeah. terrified. And we're only at 26 feet. Remember that I think that the max height we ever reached was 47 feet. Right. If you're dropping from 45, 50 feet, you're talking about even if you do it right, it's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 pounds of force. I mean, it's it, it gets way up there. As you know, it, I mean, breaking your wrist, breaking any bone can happen very easily if you're not dead on. We've seen a lot of that in the past. We've seen these guys get sideways. I mean, if you come off sideways up that bar and you land wrong, I mean, you're right. You get wrists, you get knees, you get ankles, and we've seen guys go over the bars, which is pretty impressive to be able to go over the bars with that steep of a ramp, right? But, I mean, anything can happen. And like you said, the landings on this, I mean, look, this is 26 feet. They got a pretty steep landing, but the landing is crazy hard. I, I'm here to tell you that right now. Right. Well, the man who knows uh, what he's talking about, Jeremy McGrath, actually has a gold in this competition. John Brankus from Sports Science, uh, big thanks 
for explaining that and terrifying the daylights out of us. We're gonna, I think we're gonna watch this now like uh, from between our fingers as the, as the night gets longer and the bar gets higher. Josh Hansen in the gate. Smooth takeoff there. And again, a very upright style, kind of sucks the bike up at the very end. Hansen always smooth, silky smooth. I think he's saving a little effort for a little later. He really doesn't Most look definitely. like he's working very hard at all right now. Yeah, no, he, uh, Hansen's saving a little in the tank there. We always see the flashy Hansen, right? And right now we're seeing a little bit of the conservative Hansen. So, you heard John Brankus talk about the force on the landing. This rider has a recently broken wrist. He just had it repaired, had the surgery on it, but now he's starting to get way higher in the sky, <laughs> dropping from basically yeah. a three-story building. Yeah, you saw, him, you, you saw him on the takeoff there do a little seat bounce. Now, what we call seat bounce is kind of, you know, when you take off out of the, the start there, Check this out. He's going now. Here's the other thing. Ooh, look at that. He's trying to take a lot of that pressure off that right wrist and put it on his legs and things like that. You can see the tape there. But also, here's another thing. If you land on the front wheel first, typically it's going to be a bit of a softer landing because your forks hit, then your rear shock hits. That is a way to ease up some of the pressure instead of landing both wheels at the same time or taking the risk on landing with the rear wheel and slapping the front down, which gives you a really Big jolt and and what we've seen happen when you do land really rear wheel heavy is the bike can actually just be ripped right out of your hands. Yes, for sure. It can. The when you lean too far back, land on the rear wheel, that's when you have to have like your grip has to be super strong because it slaps the front and wants to pull you off the back. Uh, we're gonna see probably a little bit of that a little later in the competition because once you get high. You cannot, it's very difficult then to get your forward, your body weight and your forward momentum uh, to the front of the bike to, to make a smooth landing. I mean, at the end of this competition, it's really just about making it. It's not about style points. And a lot of the guys have said that, that they're almost you know, too scared to continue sometimes. <laughs> Renner certainly has been through this. He, you know, he has the, the biggest height in the competition, 2012 in L.A. 47 feet be clear to win that gold and I don't think anybody has deserved the gold more than Ronnie Renner did on that night. I, you know, Renner's a great example of someone. He he spends his time really methodically preparing for this event. That bike is a custom prepared step up machine. Yeah, it is. I mean, like I said, Renner is he's the master at this event here. You can see how uh, he's looking all style and got those sweet rims on that bike, but this guy puts a lot of thought into this event, and he's he's practicing, and he looks I mean, so he's, effortless. Yeah, he's getting giving himself a little extra insurance on this event because this is his event. So 26 feet, all six riders have cleared, and I got a feeling we're going to push this bar up again and really start to test our step up riders. Renner working on that bike every single round. So step up is still going and will be going for a while. But right now, let's go up at Skateboard Big Air and Brandon Graham. Welcome to America's Navy Skateboard Big Air here at the Circuit of the Americas. Brandon Graham alongside the legend, Tony Hawk. And we're just through round one with one skater left to go. Tom Shar landing the 900 off of the quarter pipe, taking the lead. And dropping in now, your defending gold medalist, Elliot Sloan. Elliot has been struggling with the win. He told me himself. Usually that would be a flip trick over the gap there, but the wind's just preventing him from trying it. This is his signature tail grab by 40. And uh, he was anticipating the wind to blow him out further that time, and he didn't get it, so he had to just throw it away. Right, Tony. So let's take a look back as Elliot Sloan unable to put his first run down. Let's show you how we got to where we are. As there you see Tom Shark going up. Bob Burnquist full run. Stop. And 
Bob went with his tried and true. Switch, back set 180. Into an Indy 360, landing backwards out of that trick. It was extremely hard, especially at that height. That, that exact run got him first place in 2008, and three times last year. <laughs> Familiar territory as we've seen that routine time and time again from Bob Bernquist. Look at the amplitude. He doesn't grab that until he's 10 feet up. Insane. There you see Jake Brown. No stranger to the podium here in Big Air, but Tom Shar, our leader, all of 14 years old. The wind blowing like crazy. Put this down. Look at that, backs it all through 60, over the 70-foot gap. And then just one of the cleanest end hunters you've ever seen. The Tom Shaw, already a member of the 900 club, <laughs> one of only four guys in this entire field who has landed a 900. And he has our overall lead. Much more skateboard big air and Moto X step up when we come back from X Games Austin. On site. On site. Hi everybody, welcome to X Games Austin 2014. My name's Jimmy Coleman and uh, we get to hang out up on top of the big air ramp with none other than Mitchy Brusco. We got a special treat out here today doing a Skype chat. We're gonna talk to a few fans and take a few runs, right? Hi Mitchy. Hey, what's your name? Well, Olivia. Hi. Hey, what's up, buddy? Why is the Meg ramp to you? Would you get dizzy? Yeah, you can get pretty scared looking down. 
When you did the 1080, what was going through your mind before you tried it? Is the wind going to affect your jump much? If the wind is a little higher, I'll roll in. Good luck. All right, thanks, man. You want to take a run? Yeah, let's do it. Here, I'll take that. You don't want to roll? Do you want, or you want to roll down with that? Oh, you're taking that? Okay. All right. Uh, Mitchie Brusco always has time for the kids. Love that. He is a two-time X Games skateboard big air silver medalist. Still looking to add a gold to that cabinet. Speaking of guys searching for gold, our current leader, Tom Shar there. More big air when we come back. Let's send it back to Moto X Step Up with Tess Sewell and Jeremy McGrath. Uh, thanks, Brandon. Back at Moto X Step Up here, Circuit of the Americas. Take a look at this unbelievable crowd that's come out here in Austin to watch the competition today. There you see the face of the Step Up. And there are still six athletes left in the competition. The bar is at 28 feet. That is almost three stories from the ground, folks. Massimo Bianconcini is going to be the first one to attempt this height. You see that takeoff test? He was, he was doing a little of the sideways takeoff also. A little bit different than Renner style. Clears the bar, but he's kind of got that angle takeoff too. But here we go. He's saying crossing the face a little bit, a little bit of a whip. It's kind of pulling him back a little bit on that. But nice shot. And, and again, still it seems to be plenty of air between Massimo and that bar. So yeah. I got a feeling that crossbar is going pretty high tonight. That's Bianconcini out of Monterenzio in Italy. Next up, Bryce Hudson. Again, that surprise win in Fos de Guasu. But look really good in practice today. Super straight up and down style, too. Yeah, you, you, you notice the RPMs on his bike. I mean, he's coming out of the line really hot there, trying to get as much traction as possible, just creating a lot of RPMs. And that, and that amazing fact that, that John Brankus told us in the sports science pieces, the fact that you've got such a small margin from when the front wheel takes off to when the back wheel leaves to really, you know, deliver the last of that power and get clear, too. It really is a delicate touch. I mean, you guys at home know that you can't just take off and have the front wheel super high and land on the rear wheel, so... Hansen there, clearing the bar. I'm almost going high on the front He was a little wheel. high on the front wheel there for a while, but, I mean, if you get the front end too high and land on the rear wheel, you cannot land it like that, so... Uh, it's it's like I said, it's a delicate touch trying to let off the gas right at the top. Unless you use Renner style. Renner keeps the throttle on all the way because he's he's doing a whip, but it's on an axis style whip, which allows him to throttle it up all the way off the top. Libor Podmall in the gate. You see that black gate up behind his bike. That is basically the demarcation of how far back you're allowed to go because you only allow 25 feet of flat run in before you hit the vertical face. And back in the day, people used to just sneak back a little bit while they were adjusting themselves on the bike. So <laughs> ingenuity rules, now there's a back plate. Podmall, again, the broken right wrist, recently repaired, 28 feet. Wow, way over. No problem there for Podmall. And the Czechoslovakian, he's actually the only non-American winner of the step up. And little head shake there. Competition, I think he beat Renner. So, yeah, Ronnie Renner is beatable, folks. Yes. Here's right. another guy that's just rock solid on this event. And one of the greatest step up competitions ever, Jamie McGrath. <laughs> Matt Biden. Mike Biden's shoulder came out three times, oh. two times at least, out of its socket, put it back in. The heart, the, you know, the determination this guy had, unfortunately. Lost it to you. <laughs> Fortunately for me, or unfortunately for him. Biting 28 feet wide. Good takeoff. Little suck up of the bike at the end there. Looks like the line he's using is pretty steep. You saw kind of G out right into the face there, but yeah, Biden just getting it done right there for sure. Check out this landing. Oh. 
Now you see back wheel first, and really you, you, you have to try and hang on. Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta hang on. And, and even up to the last second, they're trying to get their front wheel down. Because if you can land with front and rear wheel at the same time, the landing becomes probably halfway, half as difficult. And uh, you can see Biden there trying to get his bike level with the landing. But definitely uh, an expert, expert at this. And one of the things that you've got to think about at home, you know, this, this takeoff is probably about 16 feet tall. So every time you go, your, your landing is blind. Oh, yeah. I mean, not only blind, look, look at, this is what Brenner's seeing here, what we're seeing at home. And it gets to the point, I mean, obviously Renner just clears that thing with ease, but it gets to the point where you're looking at the face and you can't see the bar because you have a visor over your eyes, right? So you're not looking at the bar. You can't even tell how high it is. And, and at some point you think, man, this is pretty impossible. How am I gonna get over this? And uh, they end up doing it. Renner is cleared, everybody cleared at 28 feet. And check this out, certainly the Americas are a new home. A fair day party here for X Games Austin. <laughs> Uh, day three for Next Games continues tomorrow, beginning at noon on ESPN for BMX Dirt. Then at two on ABC, catch Ford Rallycross, Skateboard Park, and Moto Speedy Style. Finally, the day concludes at eight on ESPN with Moto X Freestyle and BMX Big Air Final. And I, I'm absolutely astonished at the number of people hanging out with us here at Circuit of the Americas. Just a, and that was, it's a mob scene out there. Every one of the stands is just packed, no matter what venue. You go to, they're, they're hanging out with all the different vendors. I saw a guy with giant chicken legs walking around. So, <laughs> this is this facility. Well, they turkey legs. So that would be a big amazing. chicken. This facility <laughs> is amazing. I mean, these guys are right here on the straightaway that the cars go 200 plus miles. Oh, no, it's just incredible. 30 feet from Massimo Bianconcini. You can see the, see the view in his eyes. That is literally a three-story building that you're falling from once you get over that bar. And that's if you just barely clear it. This is when it starts to get a little, little testy, as I must say. Bianchini's best finish in the step of competition was fourth in Munich last year. Oh, a little whip again. Nice. Up and over nicely. Well, you know what, Tess, here's the deal. What's going to become so important, and we've seen everyone clear the bar up to this point, no problem, but what's going to become huge is the takeoff, the, the start, the release of the clutch when these guys move from this position to get going because when you're, when you're trying to go this high, you want to get your feet up off the ground, on the pegs, as fast as possible, as we see starting blocks here. This is probably going to help. Look. That is a way that it's going to help you, right? Okay, Jeff? yes. He, he's, he's like literally taking a quarter of the distance away from his feet coming up on the pegs. And that's part of the trick of this, this event is getting your feet on the pegs, getting settled, and then boom. That really fast the delivery of power is right there. And he, 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 he asked me, actually, he said, hey, do you think I can use these starting blocks? Because my legs are too short. So. Bryce Hudson using the blocks for more than that. Let's check in with Jamie Little. And I talked to Bryce before that, and he said, hey, we're trying to reinvent the wheel here, whatever helps us. And like you mentioned, it really helps stabilize his bike. It's something he just started doing. He said, hey, I'm 5'9", I'm not one of the tallest guys. And it's shown tonight, he has been flawless on every attempt. Thanks, Jamie. There you saw the guy carrying the blocks, actually, is Jared McNeil, who is an unbelievable rider in his own right, one of the Craziest whips in the business, too. <laughs> yeah, that kid's but I, 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 I like that. That is simple, homegrown technology. Yep. A couple of pieces of wood, you're up and over. Hansen takes the bar, 30 feet, no problem. Well, now here's a guy with long legs. So the takeoff might be a little bit easier, but I think the blocks, I think he's onto the blocks there. He's onto I, I love this valet parking that Kenny has going, too. Every, every round is like, yeah. Take this, wash it, you know, <laughs> yeah. clean it up, ready for the next round. Vivo <laughs> Pogmall, it's getting up there. It's 30 feet already, and remember, every time he comes down, the impact on his wrist has to be affecting him. Mentally, that has to be playing into the game, too. Well, I think it's probably, you know, I, I think initially it probably was playing with him a little. Now the adrenaline's kicking in. The, the event's in full swing here. 
and the competitor is coming out. Hodmall, Hudson, Fighton, and Renner have all won gold in step up. Hodmall, I think, a surprise too when he won it, but see his wrist there, he's, he's kind of taking. Ooh. Give it a little extra there. You can see his wrist on the throttle. He was getting kind of a really straight using an arm twist. twist. Yeah, like a little bit of an arm twist instead of a wrist twist. So maybe he's being a little extra careful there, but getting over the bar nonetheless. It was nice. So four of the six clear at 30 feet. Fighting, re racked and ready to go. So, taking a look over at our skateboard big head, Jake Brown, Jake is getting ready to go and take off. And it's, it is one of the most impressive things. I have, look at that. When you are on top of this big air rolling, you have no idea why anybody would throw themselves down on a skateboard. Oh. A little over rotation. And again, again. They're playing with the wind over there at Big Air as much as you are here. In fact, more exposed on that Big Air ramp. And that Navy Skateboard Big Air and finals coming up after step up tonight. Ooh, a little bit of wobble there for Biden. Oh, did it stay up? Wow. He is a lucky individual. Didn't even move. Yeah, didn't even get that close. That was, that was about the earliest one we've seen yet. You can see the takeoff. Look at that. He, he was sliding a little sideways. Didn't get the traction he wanted. Maybe they're a problem. You saw a lot of the guys with their mechanics earlier. Oh! Oh, it you just it knocked the level down. Wow, so that was crazy. That's interesting because you know, the guys often clear their path. Oh, you can see they're doing it now. Because if you've got just that little the marbles, the dust is on there, and all of a sudden you're spinning. So it is a clear, it, it's a clear attempt. I mean, very fortunately, but now Renner's thinking, I don't want to do the same thing. Well, you can see uh, Bite use this line right over here, and Renner's taking this line that's right here, and he's going to carve up that lip. Uh, we're going to see how that plays into the, the jump here, but needless to say, Renner, he's got a plan, that's for sure. Great shot of the, uh, the takeoff face there. You see the two very distinct rucks. They've got that blue groove. The rubber is laid down in the Moretta, but ready. But Renner, he likes cutting across. And just behind Renner there, you see the guy with the, the sunglasses on next to the, uh, the girl with the round four board. That is Jesse Olsen. He actually is the builder of the course here. Yeah. Nice tennis straight work there, Jeremy. <laughs> Jesse Olsen there he is. builds Jesse these courses and has to cut this lip. And building that step up lip is it's so difficult to get the lip right with no kinks in it. But I think he's built a great one here in Austin this week. Impressive. Look at that. I mean, just I think the one of the greatest things about watching Renner going over this bar is you can tell he's prepping for later in the competition. And as soon as he finishes, talk to the mechanic, we think about it, what can we do? Is there any reset? Well, on Saturday, Team USA faces Nigeria as part of their send-off series for, for, of course, the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. So watch U.S. Men's Soccer Saturday at 5.30. On ESPN, World Cup time coming up. Wow, that is going to be absolutely awesome. A whole month of phenomenal, as I call it, football, but everyone here calls it soccer. And this guy, he calls it football because he's from Italy. Massimo yeah. Biancaccini, you saw, he, he was putting that little bit of firewood on He's knocking off the idea of he's Hudson like, there. He's like, wait a second, this works at price. I'm going to give it a try. So, leaning on the fire log from the Enduro X pit. Very clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever's working, right? Yeah, Cuccini going, and this is 32 feet. It's going up two feet at a time because they're riding that well. They really are finding a lot of power to get over. Oh. No. Super fast delivery. They, they, I think he almost seemed a little bit too, too fast. Yeah, because you can hear the RPMs come up. It seemed like he spun. And then when you spin, you're not making forward traction. You're not making forward speed. Therefore, we have a 
bar connection. And you can see that the back wheel shifted over a little bit there as he was going. So I think he lost traction probably on the first third of that takeoff. He has now missed. And you see the top of the screen there. Biancaccini missed. That means he has to come and take his second attempt right away. If he misses on this attempt, well, he'll be sitting there waiting, hoping that no one else clears. But if someone else clears and he misses, yeah. he's out of the competition. Well, this is the part where it gets really, other than the beginning of the competition, this part is so nerve-wracking right here. When you miss the bar the first time, you're the first guy to miss. So you're like, oh, no. All right, so you're sort of kind of thinking, man, I got to gotta make up for what just happened. This right here is a huge, huge nerve-wracking moment. And this is where you maybe, I love that piece of firewood. <laughs> It's a tool, folks, it's a tool. But this is where you really need to be even more calm and just deliver that oh, yeah. power smoothly. Well, you can't override it, just like you're saying. You gotta be calm and be patient. Let this thing come to him. Better takeoff, is it enough? Oh, yes! Man, oh, that felt good, so Massimo Bianconcini, he will be able to advance. It's a fine line between too much RPMs and not enough, right? Using we saw him spin a little there. But so, Biancontini is so step it will continue, but let's check in with Skateboard Big Air with Brandon and Tony. What's up there, guys? Uh, thank you so much, Tess. We are in the middle of a heated battle here in round one of America's Navy Skateboard Big Air in front of this sellout crowd. It's Circuit of the Americas. Tom Shar still our leader, but here is Mitchy Brusco. Jake Brown. Oh, excuse me, that's Jake Brown. It looks like he's getting a practice run in. <laughs> Which he's been doing this whole time. Yeah, for the fans watching at home wondering, these guys uh, can come in and snake some practice runs every once in a while. Here's Mitchy Brusco. Mitchy Brusco is fighting the wind, trying to do a kickflip 360. No one has made a flip trick here tonight because, I mean, flipping the board because of the wind. Right, and for the fans just joining us, Tony, talk to us about the effects of the wind at each level here at Big Air. Well, especially in Big Air, you're using a bigger board too, so it just becomes a bigger sail when right. you're against the wind, and these guys are flipping, and as soon as they grab it, they just can't control it back to their feet because the, the wind just wants to take it away from them, and uh, it's a big risk to be trying flip tricks. Mitchie's tried it every run. So here's Bob Burnquist sitting in third. Bob's going for that lean 540 again. So Bob Burns was unable to land that, but he does still sit in third as we look toward the final. Let's see what got him here. Well, thankful. Switch from 780, Indy 360. He won three of the four big air events last year with that exact run. In front of him, Ronnie Gomez, who sits in second. Right there, 360, the only one doing that. And then this big tear drop on 41 foot eye. And your current leader, 14 year old Tom Shar, in search of his first ever gold. Tom going for the best all 360. And then this huge 900. Landing super solid and just doesn't have a care in the world about the wind that's blowing him further towards the flat. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a 900, and that is your current leader. Tom Shar, he sits in first place. Again, this is round one with the top five advancing to the final a little later this evening as he drops in for his third run. 720 over the gap. Oh, not quite. And that wind's starting to blow in. I'm starting to feel it here in the uh, broadcast booth. So you can imagine what it's like up there on the ramp. So Shar will hold on to his 86. And now dropping in our defending gold medalist, Elliot Sloan. He sits in ninth place. We need some work here to get into the top five. And his attempts at these uh, Telegraph F40s have been the highest errors so far tonight. Look at that. That is massive. 18 foot, six inch taking it. 540. Elliot Sloan. That's the highest error we've seen, but I think the, uh, the mute 360 in the beginning here is going to work against him a little bit because most of the other guys are doing that without grabbing. Right. 
So let's take another look. 18 and a half feet off the quarter pipe, Elliot Sloan. Such a good landing there, though. He, he uh, you know, he anticipated the wind just a bit, just enough, and it got him just over the coping. I mean, that that's a pretty high landing for a ramp this size. Wow. So he's in ninth place. We'll see his score a 79.66. So that only jumps him up into sixth place, Tony. He's still on the outside looking in, and as you can imagine, he looks a little disappointed. Let's bring in our head judge because I thought that was probably going to be top five material, but we head out to America's Navy Skateboard Big Air head judge Dave Meddy. Dave, talk us through what you saw there on uh, Elliot's run. Uh, Elliot hit the 50 footer. He did the mute three, tail grab five, 18 six, and uh, you know going over the 50 foot gap. That's a uh, that's a lot different than hitting the uh, the big gap. So. He Italo got, did 360 Ollie. Yeah, Italo did the 360 Ollie, which was uh, pretty ridiculous. Um, Elliot grabbed it, and then he got bumped into the sixth spot. All right, well, thank you to Dave Meddy. We'll be checking in with you a little bit later. Yeah, let's do it again. All right. All right. So Tom Shar is our current leader, but when we come back, Moto X Step Up continues. Stick around for X Games Austin. Yeah. 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 
Welcome back, everyone, to Moto X Step Up here at X Games Austin. Joust is the X Games destination for fantasy action sports. And tonight's question, who will place the highest among the young guns in skateboard big air? And certainly we've seen Tom Shar just absolutely killing it over there on the big air. But go to xgames.com slash joust to make your picks. And I can tell you, among the announcers here at X Games, it is a pretty heated competition. So a lot of fun. Tom Shar leading in our Navy Skateboard Big Air, just across the, uh, well, a long way across the F1 track here at Circuit of the Americas. But we are at the step up, and Ronnie Renner is facing down this absolutely massive pile of dirt. Matt Byton, though, big surprise, being eliminated from competition first. Unexpected, I mean, very unexpected. Byton, the le you know, legend, many years yeah, experience, incredible. This incredible rider of the, the step up here, just unfortunately having some trouble. And, and Renner, it took a while to set this up. You start to get your own head. Look how calm he was. Renner, you see how calm he was on the start? Just real mellow. You can hear the, the, the delivery of power, as you were saying earlier. Yeah, I was like, but he also had, a, had kind of a straight start to it, whipped it right at the very end. And that's one of the things that makes Ronnie such a great at this event is he can he can change it up. He can see a different line that will help him out. Doesn't have to cut across the face. Doesn't have to be a whip all the way. I mean, look at how straight that was by comparison. Just a very slight whip over the bar itself. Look at that bike. It's so pretty. <laughs> that landing was hard, <laughs> really still bad. very hard. Okay, Biancaccini again. He missed his first attempt the last time around. So we are at Moto X Step Up here at Circuit of the Americas on our Moto X track. Matt Byton already eliminated from competition. 33 feet is the bar height. That is from the floor. It is like jumping out of a third story building. Massimo Biancaccini missed his first attempt at 32 feet. He's using that little chunk of wood as a footrest to try and get him up on the pegs as early as possible. We're talking about this tonight.